So in this video, we are going to extend our discussion of rational functions, and I'm going to give you a lot of variety in terms of uh, different rational functions we're going to work with, and I'm going to graph them, and hopefully you can follow, follow along and graph them with me. So the first thing I want to talk about is actually a linear over linear rational function, because I just want to go over what we talked about last time. So this is the algebra I left off. Um, and I, I wrote this to prove to you that uh, linear over linear rational function never never crosses its horizontal asymptote. And I also mentioned that something happens, something special happens to the rational function if d over c equals b over a. I said that if this is true, you can tell that um, the numerator and denominator can actually, um, they're actually multiples of one another. And now, since we talked about holes previously, it's actually meaningful to revisit this scenario. So if the numerator and denominator are, are multiples of one another, how does the graph look like? Well, let's take a look. Now, don't forget to put the restriction, just like you did in grade 11, after you cancel out the common factors when you studied rational expressions. So how does the graph look? It's a horizontal line with a hole. Okay, so if you're working with a linear over linear rational function and you have a common factor, then you're not even going to have a horizontal asymptote to talk about. Okay, all you have is a horizontal line with a hole. So this uh, is basically uh, concluding what I wanted to mention uh, in this lesson when we talked about linear over linear rational functions. I wanted to make sure you understand that uh, whenever you have these types of functions, these types of rational functions, we are never going to cross the horizontal asymptote, okay? Even if d over c equals b over a. In fact, if d over c equals b over a, there is no horizontal asymptote to talk about because the numerator and denominator are multiples of one another. Okay, so you know what? Let's investigate something that is uh, fancier. Okay, so we're going to do a quadratic over a quadratic. So I'm going to have them factored for you, but sometimes I will not factor it for you. So your job is to factor it yourself. Okay, so this one is quadratic over quadratic, but with a common factor. Well, not that exciting, but you know what? Eh, it's better than what we did before. So if I have a quadratic over a quadratic with a common factor, um, you actually have you can simplify it to a linear over linear with a restriction so this is basically a slight upgrade to what we did previously so it's linear over linear with a whole okay all right so i know because it's linear over linear never cross horizontal asymptote what is the horizontal asymptote y equals one what's the vertical asymptote x equals one Uh, what's the x-intercept? Negative 4. What's the hole at? The hole is at 3. Okay. And then uh, what else? y-intercept is negative 4. All right. So, you know what? I just want to find the positioning of this hole. So, you know what? Let g of x equals x plus 4 over x minus 1. All right, so g of 3, basically, I copied f of x as if the restriction was not there. Because if it wasn't there, then there wouldn't be a hole. So now I'm basically using, by creating g of x, I'm, I'm, I'm identifying the location of this hole. But I couldn't find f of 3 because f of 3 is undefined. So I just overcome that by creating another function g of x. Oops. That's 3 minus 1, which is 2. So I have 7 over 2. 3.5. So, you know, something over here. This is 3, 7 over 2. Bam, bam, bam. Done. Okay? So, slight upgrade to what we did. All right. 
So now, you know what? Let's upgrade even more. So I'm going to do a cubic. over a cortic oh yeah that's exciting cubic over cortic i mean why not okay so where should we begin where should we begin so i'm going to start with the vertical asymptotes okay so seven oh pretty far okay good x equals seven not drawn the scale one that's a seven there. X equals one and then negative three. Uh, negative six is the x intercept. I mean this like this makes what we did earlier really straightforward. Okay, uh four is another x intercept here. Uh what else do we have? I think I'm missing an x intercept. Negative one. Okay, the wider, the sorry, the horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. Now, how did I know that? Because it's degree three over degree four, so the, the denominator will outgrow the numerator, which means as x um, becomes larger and larger in magnitude, uh, the the ratio will approach zero. Okay, there's one thing I get to find, which is the y-intercept. To be honest with you, I don't really care what the y-intercept is. I just care whether it's positive or negative. So this is going to be negative 24, okay, negative 24, and this is going to be 7 times 9, which is 63. So it's negative 24 over 63. Like I said, I don't really care uh, what it is equal to, I just know it's negative. So you know what, I'm going to plot, I, I don't want to make it even messier, so I'm just going to plot that, but the y-intercept is negative 24 over 63 okay yeah 7 times 9 63 beautiful okay uh, oh I can simplify that oh sorry that's bothering me negative 8 over 21 negative 8 over 21 okay Let me... negative 8 over 21 now why did I need the y intercept because now so I have this point, it must cross the whole the x-axis. Bam. Okay. Now, as I cross this horizontal, so sorry, this vertical asymptote, x equals one, should I change signs? Absolutely. The behavior has to be opposite here. These two behaviors have to be opposite because x minus one to the power of one. This factor is being raised to the power of one. Uh, so I have to change, I have to uh, have opposite behavior. So if this is negative infinity, on the other side will be positive infinity. What should I do at 4? I'm going to cross the x-intercept at 4, and then go down to negative infinity. And on the other side, once I look at the factor, bam, easy peasy, okay? Now what about on the other side of negative 3? I'm going to have the same behavior, because x plus 3 squared. Okay, cross negative six here. Approach, approach the horizontal asymptote. Beautiful. I know it looks weird, but it is what it is. Okay. And this one, uh, you might be wondering, why didn't I do the math to check where it crosses the horizontal asymptote? Well, luckily, the horizontal asymptote is on the x-axis. So guess what? I know exactly where it crosses the horizontal asymptote whatever the x-intercepts are okay so let's do one more let's do actually we'll do two more all right x plus one x minus three squared oh sorry x minus three cubed x plus five all squared x minus four to the six x minus one x plus 3 cubed. No. Oops, there's a cube there. Alright, so what's the degree of the numerator? Degree of the numerator is 6, degree of the denominator is 10. Wow. Alright. So, same strategy. Alright, 1. x equals 1. 
negative 3 here. Uh, x equals 4. So remember, stare at the at the exponents applied on the factor and you'll know whether you should change signs or not. Uh, let's see, negative 1 is an x-intercept, 3 is an x-intercept, and negative 5. Make some more room here. Alright, okay. So I need the y-intercept and I am good to go. So y-intercept, I don't really care uh, well, what it is. I just need to know if is it pause or negative. It starts me off and then I can just fill everything else out. Um, so basically I start from the middle and I spread out and, and graph the rest of the rational function. So anyway, so y is up 0, so this is going to be tw negative 27 times 25. Okay, that's negative 675. And then this is going to be ooh, 4 to the 6, okay, times 27. But it's going to be negative 110592. So 675, so you can reduce that to 25 over 4096, all right, let me just make sure, negative, negative, positive, yeah, okay, it is definitely positive. So anyways, that's the value, but you know what, I'm going to plot that, you can scale it, so uh, I'm going to go like this, oh, that was, uh, be careful curled in too far. If I curl in too far, it doesn't pass a vertical line test and it's not a function. All right, on the other side of one, I'm gonna switch signs and I'm gonna bounce off three. Why did I bounce off three? Because, oh shucks, I shouldn't bounce off three. It's a cubic. I, I, I stared at this too, but it should have been, a th I looked at the wrong factor. I don't bounce off three. Oh, silly Billy. All right, okay, don't bounce off three. Don't bounce off three. It's okay. Don't want to bounce off. What you really want to do is point of inflection. There we go. Okay, point of inflection. Why is it point of inflection? That's what we did in the previous unit, right? Point of inflection. Okay, that, that was okay, right? Um, and then what should you do on the other side of 4? Other side of 4, same behavior because the exponent's even. Approach a horse asymptote. We've got one more branch to go. On the other side, it's positive because it's cube. this factor is being cubed. What should I do at this x intercept? I'm going to approach it. I'm going to bounce because that's what the factor says. And then approach the horse on asymptote because it's degree 10 in the denominator versus degree 6 in the numerator. Degree 10 will trump degree 6. All right, I know it looks weird, but it is what it is, okay? I'm very tempted to fix this, but you know what? I'm confident that you can uh, draw a nice little point of inflection there. All right, so actually I missed one example I, I wanted to show you. So you know what, let's go for it. f of x equals x plus 4 x minus 3 all over x minus 3 all squared. So why did I add this example? Because I want to show you if there is a common factor, there may not be a vertical asymptote. Okay? Because look, I, I definitely do have a common factor of x minus 3, but guess what? There were actually two of them in the denominator. I canceled one of them away and there's one left. So there's actually no hole because the vertical asymptote at x equals 3 did not disappear, right? That factor is still in the denominator. So the hole only exists after I cancel out the common factors and, and the factor in the denominator is gone, okay? So there, yeah, this one's actually just, it simplifies the linear over linear and I'm really reluctant to do this because you should be a beast at this. You should be a pro and a linear over linear by now, but anyways, I'll do it nonetheless. 3. That's negative 4, uh, negative 4 thirds. So, look at this graph. Do you see a hole there? Absolutely not. 
So this is a great communication question, I guess. If there's a common factor between the numerator and denominator, can you guarantee there's a whole? No, because it only happens if the factor is removed uh, from the denominator after the simplify. If that factor is still there, that means you still have a vertical asymptote. Right? Okay. So we're gonna do one more. I'm gonna do one more. Now this one seems easier, but it's actually not. Okay, so f of x equals x minus five over x plus four, x plus two, x minus three. Okay, so I just made up these factors. Um, this one has no common factors between uh, numerator and denominator, so no whole whatsoever. Uh, uh, x intercept is 5, negative uh, 4, vertical asymptote, negative 2 and 3. Okay, what about the vertical asymptote? It's one. Oh, sorry, blah, blah, blah. what about the horizontal asymptote? Y equals one. And uh, Y intercept, this is negative 20, negative six. So negative 20 over negative six is 3.33333, 10 thirds, which means right here. Oh, this is ugly. Let's try to extend this a little, help myself out. Okay, please not draw on the scale. If you have grid paper, yours will look a lot prettier than mine. Okay, so, hmm, why can, why is this, I would argue this is the hardest example we've done so far. Because I actually have to do a lot more algebra for this question compared to the one we did with like a degree 10, okay because I have no clue whether, where we cross the horizontal asymptote, even if we cross the horizontal asymptote. Now, earlier I told you uh, linear over linear doesn't cross horizontal asymptote. I didn't say anything about quadratic over quadratic. Okay, so in fact, quadratic over quadratic, you can cross the horizontal asymptote. Um, not necessarily, but you might. So there's no guarantee here. So I have to do the work, I have to do the algebra. Um, Cubic over cubic, I have to check. So yeah, I, I unfortunately have to let f of x equal one and check if it crosses the horizontal asymptote. So I'm gonna simplify, because I'm gonna do it anyways. Minus x minus 20, x squared minus x minus six, x squared minus x minus six equals x squared minus x minus 20. Um, beautiful. So it's 20, uh, 14 equals zero. So what does this mean? Since no solution to f of x equal one, therefore horizontal asymptote is not crossed. Okay. No solution to this equation, which means the horizontal asymptote is not crossed. Now, but I could not have just uh, assumed that to be true. Okay. I could easily create another quadratic over quadratic where uh, the horizontal asymptote is crossed. Okay, so I, I showed you some math or some logic for linear over linear, but it doesn't it doesn't uh, work out for quadratic over quadratic. Okay, so now that I know it doesn't cross, I am good to go. Wham bam. Okay, and it has the other side. Approach horizontal asymptote. As we on the side, don't touch the horizontal asymptote. Bam, done. Okay, so really, if the degree of the numerator is less than or equal to degree of the denominator, you can do it. Okay, it is really silly to limit the, the, the conversation to the three types of rational functions we did. So you must be wondering, what if there's a rational function where the degree of the numerator is greater than that of the denominator? Well. Uh, we'll get to that, okay? And once we tackle that question, you can graph any rational function you want. Isn't that beautiful?